also video recording? No. It is video recording, that's what's being recorded. We don't have to put it in your case, you don't change the You can change your mind like that if you don't. Okay. I think he even ha has a perfect right not to come. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Okay, uh, let us start the afternoon session. The first speaker is Jerome. So here, there are some from Quantum Theater with you, if you guys are coming. Okay, um, thank you very much. And uh, as um, many other people here, here I, I, I would like to say that I'm very pleased and honored to speak at this conference. And uh, mm, uh, you know, I mean, both uh, Pasha and uh, Andrea are wonderful as, uh, as you know, human beings and as mathematicians. And, you know, as mathematicians, they, I mean, they, they share a lot of common features and, and in some ways they're different. But one thing that they really share in common, which uh, is, um, which has always been very kind of amazing for me, is uh, this kind of, uh, really amazing ability to constantly go back and forth between uh, abstract things and, and very concrete things. So somehow, uh, so somehow, uh, so I think both Pasha and Andre, they're kind of extremely effective about sort of talking about some pretty abstract stuff and then, then just immediately doing some kind of very, very concrete calculation which supports that or going the opposite direction, just doing some, some kind of calculations which seems, you know, very detached from everything, and then based on a calculation formula, it's something like very general and uh, surprising. And uh, so, to a certain extent, my talk will be a report of my, my inability to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, so uh, more specifically, I'm going to actually formulate uh, several sets of conjectures Mm, more precisely, there will be three sets of conjectures. Some of them are well proved in some generality, so somehow, and there will be uh, a set one. Uh, I'll put it here. Set two, and there will be. I want to put it on a different board. Set three. Set three, in fact. Is it <laughs> <laughs> you missed the beginning, so no, these are sets of conjectures. But um, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, secretly set three will imply set two. This is why I put them near uh, uh, one near the other. But I won't talk about this. And um, now they will all be not just even motivated, but in some sense they can have immediate corollary of some kind of considerations and quantum field theory, so which I mostly learned from uh, David Gayoto, and I think it's, you know, in 2019, almost nobody would be surprised by, by, by the fact that, you know, quantum field theory or string theory is effective in some fields of mathematics, but usually it's effective in one, in one of the two ways. Either it's effective for really doing some kind of uh, calculations, or it's effective, it has been very effective in inventing several 
you know, new, new mathematical notions, like you know, vertex operator algebra, something like that. So here, this will be all, all of the sets will be actually equivalences of categories, and it will be not just motivated by things appearing in physics, but it will just appear in physics. But I will not explain how they appear in physics, so let me just say that the reason I put them on two different boards is that the physics uh, behind will be slightly different. So here, this will all be about and this will all I will say about physics, actually, or almost, uh, maybe at least, at least for for the next 50 minutes. Uh, this will be all about 3D and equal four uh, gauge theories and various constructions related to this. And uh, but the conjectures will be absolutely mathematical. I will not mention any quantum field theories. Uh, and here it will be about S duality for boundary conditions uh, for forty for gauge theories. Now this part of the board uh, will be will have you know will have a lot to do with what Misha talked about. Uh, yesterday, but I will mostly stay with, uh, mostly start with this one. Uh, and um, now the reason I said that somehow this talk is in my report and ability to sort of switch between this kind of abstract and uh, and, and something concrete is that uh, it especially for this part of the board, but partly also for this one, I absolutely do not understand. Uh, the motivation behind it. So somehow I can only sort of follow. Well, just I, I can I can understand the the, the the final statement, but but how it is deduced, what's the motivation for this, uh, is absolutely mysterious for me. But I should say that it's based on some kind of calculations that physicists do, and I, and I really have absolutely no idea what those calculations are doing, and, and even what they're computing. But somehow, but by computing something, they can, they can actually come up with these conjectures that will, especially you know, this part of the board will be, uh, will be the most surprising, and 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 uh, so. So this is the part I will not be able to explain, but uh, I want to form out the conjectures and maybe say a few words about what's, what has been proved. And last sort of kind of very general thing I'll say is the following, that, uh, that uh, here uh, there will be uh, some, on both boards, there will be some theorem, which has been known in mathematics for some time. So there will be some theorem one, which I'll form with, and here there will be some theorem two, And these things will be generalizations. It will be kind of very wide generalization of so this theorem. So somehow dotted line is generalization. So it will be two, two types of generalizations of theorem one and maybe one type of generalization of theorem two. And that's, that's what I want to do. OK, that's kind of the general scheme. And uh, now uh, 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 let me first uh, let me begin by explaining what will be theorem 1, what will be theorem 2, and then what are the generalizations. OK, so theorem 1. goes under the name uh, uh, local geometric class field theory. So let me actually do the, this. Uh, let me write. Instead of class field theory, I will write CFT. I think that Bjelanson has noted uh, about 25 years ago that the word CFT the abbreviation CFT has sort of uh, two standard meanings in mathematics or physics. One is class field theory, that is conformal field theory. And this is very non-accidental. And so, <laughs> so um, and yeah, and this theorem is due to Lamont around, I think, 1996. Mm, now, to try this, this theorem, I need to introduce a little bit of notation. So first of all, there'll be some kind of standard notation that I will need. So I'll need the 
field of Laurent Bowie series, some variable t, and inside uh, there's, a, there's a string of integers. Mm. So I'll denote by d the spectrum of all and call it a formal disk. And by d star, the spec of k and call it formal punctured disk. So, and um, I will need well, let me now use the other board and uh, uh, speak of key. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you can slide this. Oh, okay, great. Well, I already raised that part. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Okay, so, mm, right, and so the next thing I'll need is that, uh, well, uh, I'll need to do some geometric object which I'll call LSN. LS stands for local systems, and I'll actually, for, uh, for this theorem, I'll need it for n equal to one, but let me introduce it in general. So this is the, well, kind of geometric objects, if you were stack classifying, so this classifies if you want moduli space of E nabla where E is rank N vector bundle on D star and which is of course trivial but we don't fix the trivialization <laughs> and uh, nabla is a connection So uh, now local geometric class field theory says the following thing. Now this k or, uh, well, let me make sure also do k star. So k star is just, uh, well, well, I'm tempted to say k without zero, but in fact, this is, some, well, it is k without zero, but I want to think about this as a geometric object and the geometric object, this thing's actually not the same. So this is just, uh, but, me behind this end of the rug, uh, but uh, uh, geometric low class field theory says the following. So somehow there will be something related to k star on the left, and that will be identified with something related to this local systems of rank one on the right. And it turns out, and and these things will be. This will be actually categories, and these categories will be equivalent. And uh, the, the th right thing to put here is the category of D module. So we think about this as some kind of infinite dimensional algebraic variety over complex numbers. And uh, so well, I have to say a little bit about what you mean by this, but this is, this is not a problem in this case. And here you should take the category of quasi-coherence sheaves. And, uh, these things. So that's that's the theorem one. That's the kind of very old theorem one, and actually it's a, it's a pretty easy theorem. So so kind of the message is it's very easy to prove this theorem if you understand the definitions properly. If you don't understand the definitions properly, it's very easy to disprove it. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, the question is whether it's easy to understand the no, it is, it, is, it is very easy to, under, to understand the definitions properly, it's, it ha but you have to be careful about sort of finding the right definition. So, so if I give you a definition, well, you, you will understand very easily, but somehow if you look for definition yourself, you might actually find the wrong one. <laughs> so, especially on this side. So, so that's, thing, that's one thing that uh, we'll be generalizing. And uh, so maybe a few remarks about uh, why it's called local geometric class field theory. So somehow, so of course, uh, you know, this K star is, or K is, uh, is an analog of a local non-Archimedean uh, uh, field. And, uh, uh, and so D model is a kind of analog of the space of functions 
on K star, and uh, uh, and so uh, and so usual classical theory says that if you have a local non commutative field that the space of functions of K star has some kind of spectral decomposition, so uh, one dimensional representations of the Galois group of that field, and that thing is an analog of uh, of representation of the Galois group. So if you sort of put this as a kind of categorical statement, then 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 really want to say that the scatter is equivalent to the category of class K. Okay, so. Now, the, the, the uh, flavor of this set one and set two, they will all be of more essentially of that thing that will say that D models on something is same as quasi carrying shapes or something else. And uh, okay, so that's. Uh, okay, I can put this back for some time. Now, uh, theorem two that will also generalize. And that will be essentially, well, the generalization I will talk about will be, well, essentially Misha formulated at the very end last time, but I will repeat it maybe with slightly different notation. So, okay, before I form a theorem two, I need to introduce some notation. Mm, so, let G be, say, connected reductive group of a complex numbers. Uh, and um, uh, now let me first uh, remind, say something about geometric Satake, and so th theorem two will not be geometric Satake. So, so uh, I mean, th uh, 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 so uh, theorem two will be something sort of related to geometric Satake, but uh, but 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 different. So uh, recall that we have the affine Grassmannian of G, which is G of K, G of O, which is again infinite dimensional, but it's a union of fine dimensional projective varieties. And uh, so there's a kind of usual geometric Satake equivalence. <laughs> which says that, uh, say, perverse. Geophoric variant uh, sheaves on the fine Grassmannian. Well, it's actually a tensor category, and this tensor category is naturally equivalent to represent fine dimensional representations of the Langlands dual group. This is Langlands dual. So, in fact, eventually I will switch the case when G is GLN in this setting. So, that will be a uh, self dual. But for now, let me keep, keep it the way it is. Now, this equivalence is nice, uh, and you know it's very useful for many purposes, but it has two very essential drawbacks. And uh, uh, one very essential drawback is that, as Misha explained last time, uh, Misha explained yesterday, if you, it's not, it does not generalize on the nose to uh, equivalence of derived category. So there is, an, there is a version of that theorem for derived category, but it, but it looks different, which is kind of, for the purposes of this talk, I don't like that. So, kind of uh, disadvantages. Mm, first disadvantage is that, uh, uh, no, it's, well, the way it's written, it's not true on derived level. And number two is that uh, it, it's impossible, the w I mean, at least the way it's written, it's impossible to deform that, deform it to get, uh, uh, to get quantum groups. in the right hand side. And uh, now I, uh, now and of course, you know, again, for the purposes of this conference, that, that's a huge drawback because, you know, speaking in a conference dedicated to Pasha Andre and not mentioning quantum groups will be kind of, 
you know, complete waste of time. I think. <laughs> you, already, you already mentioned them in the previous sentence that it's impossible to extend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I don't have a good reaction to that. <laughs> So uh, now the point is that uh, now I must mention that um, many years ago there was actually a completely wrong idea. Well, not completely, but there was an idea which doesn't work about how I mean about where where to get something like quantum group from in this setting, and uh, namely uh, so this um, uh, Frank Grassmann is equipped with a more or less natural line bundle, which is kind of a determinant line bundle, and we can kind of see the instead of considering sheaves on the Frank Grass model, you can see some twisted monodromic sheaves with, you know, with some more, uh, so sheaves on the total space of this line bundle without zero with some monodrome on the fibers. And, uh, and, uh, and so this monodrome sort of introduced additional parameter, which people thought could give, eventually give, could give rise to quantum group, but that doesn't work that way. And for example, if you take this monodrome to be generic, then you're going to get essentially a trivial category. But nonetheless, we will do something like this, but, but in a slightly different setting. So okay, so so there's a uh, 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 there's a cure for both things. Due to Gates, Gary, and Luria. but it's it is slightly. Uh, slightly more complicated, and that will be, the, and that, that that's the theorem too that I want to formulate. Okay, so let me let n inside G be a maximal unipotent sum group. And then we choose chi from n of k to the additive group, a generic character. Let's fix that, and uh, and then we can see, can consider the following things. We can consider, well, a different category. So here we, we can see that uh, the category of sheaves, or well, you can also talk about demons and the fine grass money, which were due for a covariant. Now we're going to do something similar, but we're going to pu put a different uh, type of equivariance here, namely. So we'll consider something that we'll denote like that, and. Uh, so, uh, so this is by definition. Well, you can consider sheaves. Or let's say, let's say, well, I should actually say the D modules on the fine Grassmannian, which are equivariant with respect to this n of k, but not just equivariant with respect to n of k, but equivariant with respect to n of k with a character. This is, that's kind of a general thing that you can define uh, if you have a group and the homomorphism to the additive group and that group acts on some space, then you can talk about d modules which are equivalent with this group together with the character. So that's 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 what we mean by Whitaker d models. Now I should say that it's this is more tricky to define than this, because here the nice feature of this geo four action I find Grassmann was that its orbits are fine are fine dimensional. Uh, and uh, here the orbits of this group are not finite dimensional, and they're not a finite dimension, not a finite core dimension. And in fact, the this, this story becomes really tricky if you take this kind to be, for example, trivial. Then, uh, uh, but for but taking this generic kind somehow ma makes things nicer, and so we can actually define this category. Uh, and uh, uh, but I'll, I won't talk about how to define this rigorously. And so one statement is that so. Well, this is already part of theorem two, maybe part A of theorem two, is that this thing is again equivalent to rep G check. And this is now true for all, both abelian and derived level.
Now, we can also ask a question, the equivalent is what? Uh, so here, this was actually an equivalence of tensor categories. And here, just on the nose, on the left, there is no kind of tensor structure. But in fact, there is or at least some replacement for the tensor structure. So, uh, so in fact, this is not just a of categories. This is a of categories with some additional structures. But let me ignore that. And part B is actually a generalization of that. And part B says that if we now consider, well, OK, uh, let me fix, let me choose some complex number. And uh, let me consider this category. And what this means is means that we consider instead of D models, we consider D models twisted by uh, well, I mean, I'm actually, let me just say that uh, uh, what you actually need to choose is uh, you need to choose an invariant by linear form on the Lie algebra if you want to be completely canonical. If G is simple, then you can think about that as just number because, um, you can, because uh, this forms uh, just form a one dimensional space. And then th there is a more or less canonical choice, and then we can think about this as a number. So let me think about this as a number, but but in fact, somehow, if you want to be completely canonical, then uh, then you actually need to think about it as a, as a, as, a, as an invariant form of the Lie algebra. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, so this is the missing category which is similar to this, but instead of D models, like I said, twisted D models. So this is twisted. D modules in so in the same sense as Misha talked about yesterday uh, by the determinant bundle on G and um, and uh, the claim is that that is equivalent. Well, let me actually put it in the following way. Well, I mean, I would like to put here some quantum group. In fact, what I will put here will be equivalent to a quantum group. But I, wa I want to put something, uh, something, uh, uh, well, notationally different. Uh, namely, I will put this and K L stands for Kajdan Lustig, and so this is. KL of G check on some level. Uh, this is the category. This is the category of uh, G check uh, hat. So hat means corresponding affinely algebra. Well, let me put the level one over C uh, modules of level one over C, which are. G check of all integrable so uh, and uh, and the convention is that in the level there's some also critical shift is, is incorporated in the level let me not uh, 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 specify this and this category is known to be equivalent uh, for the uh, to the category of representations by actually the work of Kajdan and Lustig, it's known to be equivalent to the category representation of corresponding quantum group, where the parameter Q is uh, is the exponent is the is e to the pi i c. So it's okay. Uh, this is a good question. So if you do it for derived categories, then there's no restriction. But you have to be careful because then, then if you really want to have no restriction, then you have to work with unbounded derived categories. So if uh, uh, if you uh, if you uh, want to impose of abelian categories, then I guess that the sh you should assume that C is not a positive rational number. Am I right? So is it, is it actually written in this in this generality or not? So I think it's maybe the reason for C when C is not rational, and uh, and, uh, and 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 on derived level it's true for all C, and uh, 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 and is expected to be true on all C, let's say. And uh, on the billion level, it's true for when C is uh, not a positive rational number. OK. So that's, that's actually that's, that's the theorem 2. So we are going to have some generalizations of theorem 2. And uh, so did I? Yeah, OK. So let me actually restore here the, what, what, what was theorem one. So theorem one was 
uh, that d modules. And by the way, this theorem also has the property that it's true for both uh, both abelian categories and derived categories. Okay. All right, so, 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 so these are some known results, and uh, now let me talk about generalizations. So, okay, so now set one. Set one has to do with abelian three D n equal four gauge theories. Now, uh, let me start with some uh, T, which is a torus. And, uh, uh, well, those are, well, algebraic torus over, over C. And I also need the representation of this torus. Now, of course, if I have a representation of the torus, it's just a bunch of characters. So I'll, uh, uh, I can think about the representation as just a homomorphism from T to C star to some power N. This homomorphism. Now, for simplicity, I will actually uh, make some additional assumption, which will make the statement that I'm going to formulate not for formally not a generalization of that. Because, uh, 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 namely, I, 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 I want to assume, let's assume for simplicity, that this map, let me call it pi, uh, assume pi is injective. So, in fact, uh, the, this, well, you can actually, Right, corresponding statement without this assumption, but it will just notation will be a little bit more cumbersome in general. And the point is that this particular statement will arise when this number n is equal to zero, and so in particular pi is trivial. So, uh, but uh, so I'll I'll, I'll formulate uh, the statement when when pi is injective, and it will be in, if you want an exercise to formulate it uh, 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 for any pi like that. Um. Okay, so if you make the assumption that it's injective, then you can actually form a short exact sequence, T goes to C star to the power N, and then we can take the quotient, and the quotient is again a torus, which I'll denote by T sub F following Hiraku's notation, and F stands for flavor, and this is what physicists would call flavor symmetry torus in this case. And uh, the point is now that if you have such, short, this is short exact sequence of tori, and uh, what you can do is they can dualize that. And uh, so you can actually uh, consider dual torus. And note that dual torus to this now, pos well, this torus is canonically self dual. No, this this torus. No, no. I mean, to see, 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 star is canonically self-dual. What? And the product is. I mean, I mean, what dual means that weight and co-weight lattices I mean, uh, lattices are interchanged, and so the weight. Well, okay, yeah, but but I can actually identify the dual torus to this as you start to the end. Well, n no, no, not with the word natural. So, I mean, if I have chosen the basis of the, uh, uh, of the, I mean, this means that well, I have I've chosen the basis of the uh, of the co of the character lattice, which is the same as just the basis of the core character lattice, and, and that that that's what it means to write this as a uh, So, uh, so then uh, the conjecture, which actually I don't know how to prove, it, uh, uh, but I'll I'll uh, I'll make. Uh, so conjecture one. The reason I want to mention this conjecture is that I think that this is this, this conjecture is the most accessible among among all conjectures I'm going to formulate. Is it says that uh, uh, well, let me say, let me write it like this. Let me write the d modules on uh, k to the n. Uh, which are equivalent with respect to T check of K, T check F, sorry, of K. 
this should be equivalent to the quasi category of quasi Cairn sheaves on some space. And this space, uh, well, uh, let me explain what this space is. So this space is the following. Uh, so here I consider, uh, so this question mark classifies the following date. Let me actually give an example first, and then I'll explain the channel. So example, so okay, so the question mark. So suppose that, suppose that my t is just uh, c star and, uh, and n is equal to 1, so I, and I have a map from c star to c star, which is just identity. Then in this case, I'll, uh, the question mark will classify the following date. It will classify e which is a rank one local system. Again, by local system, I mean just a vector bundle with a connection on the punctured disk, uh, local system on D star, uh, together was just a, uh, well, with a flat, uh, well, essentially with a flat section or, well, let me write a dual to a flat section, so I'll write with a map with E to of this star, which is a kind of map of local systems. A map compatible with connection, where here take the trivial connection just around differential. So, so that means that if this system is non-trivial, the only such map is zero. And if it is trivial, then I have uh, one dimensional space of such maps. That's, uh, but, actually if, but actually if you define it, mm, but the point is that you can think about it as some kind of algebraic right or actually stack over complex numbers. And in general, you do this for every, for every component of the C star. So in general, so we, uh, uh, we have, so let me, well, one way to say this is uh, that, so I have this, uh, so this question mark classifies the following data. So first of all, it should be uh, ET, which is a uh, T bundle on D star with connection. And then the next thing is, uh, 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 is that I can use my map pi to make out of that the C star, C star to the n bundle with connection. So let me denote it by, uh, so ET pi, this is a C star to the n bundle with connection. And uh, which is the same, uh, well, and uh, and, and I want to sort of map this to trivial to start the unbundled connection. So, so let me just write it trivial. Yes, but uh, but some uh, but somehow but 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 n but not canonically. So somehow so it's, so it's convenient to write it this way. No, no, I mean you're absolutely right. It's a product. Well, it is a product, but it's not canonically a product. So so it's but uh, but, but 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 you're right. I mean. But wouldn't conjecture one then follow from uh, from here and one? No, 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 no. Here, the, here there was k star. So. Again, the way it's formal, I say, I think the theorem is not a special case of this conjecture. Uh, you, you should generalize this, this conjecture to the case when pi, pi is not necessarily injective, and then when pi is trivial, then you will get leads on the nose the statement of uh, theorem one. But let me know. So let me just explain what happens here. Let me do two examples. So in fact, uh, uh, so let's consider um, the example uh, when. Uh, 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 yes, so um, yes, let, let's consider the example when in this language when t is trivial, so example t is just, uh, well, let's say dimension of t is 0 and uh, n is equal to 1. So, uh, and then t 
f, which is the same as tf check, is going to be c star, and which maps to again to c star by identity map. And then the statement is uh, the following. Then, uh, then you have something on the left, and you have something on the right. And then uh, on the left, you have, uh, well, and I should say that here, actually, in the conjecture is about derived categories. Then you have actually d models again. I mean by this derived category on on k, which are k star equivariant. This is not. I mean, it's not that difficult to define. I mean, we have to work a little bit to say what you mean by that. But I mean, this is not a problem to define it. Now here, uh, you should have uh, the f this question mark, and this question mark classifies local systems for the trivial torus together together with the. Uh, with a flat section. Now, you have to be, actually, this is one of the situations when I said that you have to be careful about how you define this. Now, you have to define this as a geometric object, and when you find this geometric object, you have to define as its functor of points. And in fact, it's not even a stack in general. And this is actually very important. It's a DG stack. So in this case, it's actually uh, an affine DG scheme. So somehow, in this case, this question mark is, uh, so I don't. I denote, it, uh, I denote this by question mark because I wasn't able to come up with a good notation for this thing. So, uh, 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 so uh, it's a spec of the, f uh, well, it's, let me just write what this is, just a fine line times a fine line shifted by minus one. So what does it actually mean? It means that it's, in other words, it means that it's, it's a spec of the following DG algebra, C of X epsilon, where it's a DG algebra where it's commutative DG algebra where degree of x is zero, and uh, so geometrically it's just a fine line, uh, and this fine line just uh, it's responsible to saying that somehow we have a trivial bundle with a so it's uh, with a trivial with a with a tri with a flat section and this flat section is just you know it's just one this one dimensional of space of flat sections of trivial rank one bundle, and that's what this thing is. Uh, but uh, the point is that if you write this carefully, if you sort of write the equations carefully, then you see that somehow the equations you impose are not really flat, and you have some uh, dg direction, and there's some epsilon whose degree is negative one. And then what we're saying is that if you consider this category of d modules, then it's equivalent uh, to uh, well, to quasi coherent sheaves, to the derived category of quasi coherent sheaves on that thing, which means that uh, it's modules over this DG algebra. So it's. And differential is zero. Differential is, I mean, yeah, differential is zero. And is this epsilon one variable? Well, it doesn't make, uh, this question doesn't make sense. So this, is this is just, this is commutative. Uh, well, so it's commutative in a super sense, yes. So it's a, well, I mean, in this case, it's, commu it's even commutative in the old. When you take tensor products, it starts. No, no, but I don't take tensor products. So I mean, I, I just rule it. It's a DG algebra, which has, you know, which looks like this. And uh, 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 and so it's modules over this CX epsilon. No, when you take tensor products of modules. But I don't take tensor products of modules. At least in, in, in this case, it is uh, Well, maybe. Well, I mean, I'm not, I mean, the, the statement so far is just equivalence of categories. I'm not, l let me not talk about maneuver structure. So, uh, and this is actually, this is actually a fact. I mean, th this you can check. So that's that's an example of what, what happens here. Now, maybe uh, let me say one more example. Let's, let's kind of dualize this picture. And when you dualize this picture, you get something uh, already uh, more interesting. And in fact, uh, so, uh, so another example, so suppose that example two is, so how much time do I have? So, okay, that's fine. So example two, you have t equal to uh, c star, and n again is equal to one, we have map pi from c star to c star, which is equal to identity. And uh, in this case, this tf check as well as t tf is trivial. And uh, then we get the following conjecture, and that's already a statement which I can't prove. That the category of D models on K, again, we're talking about, um, at least in principle, we're talking about derived categories. That should be equivalent to quasi-carrying sheaves on the following guy. Uh, so you take 
it classifies the following data, or exactly what's already appeared before. So this is uh, E is rank one local system. This is G star. And this is trivial rank one local system. And this is a map of flat bundles. Now, I should say that the left-hand side is something very explicit. What, what is K? I mean, after all, K is just infinite dimensional vector space. So you think about what it actually, what, what's written on the left. This is just modules of a rank two Heisenberg algebra. Because, I mean, it's a vector space. So how do you write D modules on the vector space? So take that vector space plus its dual, and then you form, uh, uh, you form the corresponding Weyl algebra. And you can see the modules over that Weyl algebra. So that Weyl, Weyl algebra is just a universal enveloping algebra of, the, of Heisenberg algebra of rank two. A rank. I mean, if you, you know, if you start with a vector space with uh, with 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 a, bi with, a, with a symmetric bilinear form, you can consider loops into that vector space and form a Heisenberg algebra out of that. So in that case, the vector space will be of dimension two. Okay. So uh, so it's uh, because the dual space to k, well topologically dual to k is again k essentially. Well, and uh, so 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 here you have just modules over some Heisenberg algebra, and, and we're saying that it's equivalent to this thing. Now the point is that you have to actually look careful what what this thing what what this means and uh, but uh, but already so I must stress that this is something this is a statement which I don't know how to prove what is easy to do is it's easy if, if we knew how to prove this then the general conjecture one uh, general conjecture one would follow this is easy to like, by, this product, by. by some kind of product well also have also have to take some fibers but in any case so so this case implies the general case And this case is, so, well, uh, let me just say that how, how you write, I mean, if you can dualize and just say that this is a uh, just rank one local system with a section. And, and so a rank one local, I mean, local system just, you can trivialize the bundle and then just given by connection form. And so a section means just a section which says, so it means that, so this is just the following thing is just omega, omega which is, leaves in, which is the one form of this star and some S which is just uh, in K with the condition that ds plus s omega is equal to zero. And, uh, and you should mod this out by K star. This is gauge action. This would, and so the tricky part is, is, to, is to understand how this equation works and, how, and, and what it means to take pollution by K star. So, but the point is that so, so, so you take sort of, if you want K star equivariant sheaves on solutions of this equation. And the claim is that that should be the same as this D modulus on K. I don't know how to prove it. But if it were true, then in particular, you would have a kind of fiber transfer which attaches to a quite given sheet, some vector space, which is the underlying vector space of this D modulus. Well, yeah, but that will be like a very big vector space. Very so big. Big, but, so but you have a candidate that would No, no, no. I, I, I don't have a candidate for anything. So uh, just uh, in any case, so, so this is a conjecture that I don't know how to prove. and. Uh, uh, but it's 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 a simple exercise to deduce the general case from this conjecture. Okay, so this was set one of my conjectures. Now I have 15 minutes left. Let me so let me explain set two and set three. So let me so here. It's again, so set two is again going to be a uh, generalization of Lamont's theorem, but in a different direction. So let me re recall Lamont's theorem. So my theorem one was that uh, G models on K star is the same as uh, quasi coherent sheaves on local systems of rank one. And the generalization, in the generalization path that we took over here was the following. We said that, first of all, this is kind of obvious generalization. So this is all about group JL1. And we can actually uh, write a kind of corresponding statement for uh, an arbitrary torus. And then instead of just having a torus, we had a torus in the representation. Now, another kind of direction of uh, 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 generalization is to uh, generalize JL1 to a non-abelian group. So, so now we're going to have non-abelian generalization. And uh, 
Well, theorem one, you can actually get, I mean, if you, uh, like I said, so I had this map pi, if I don't assume, uh, I can f you can form the slight transition as when you don't necessarily require that pi is injective. And in particular, when pi is trivial, you'll get just theorem one on the nulls. So, if you, if you write this generalization correctly. Okay, so a null abelian generalization is the following. So unfortunately, I'll have to introduce some, well, let me say what it will be about. So it will be about non abelian groups. So I don't know how to deal with general non abelian groups, but so it will all be about group GLN. And, uh, and so what, what is the most natural question to ask here is to replace, is to write instead of K star, write GLN of K. So one thing that we can try to study is G modules on GLN of K. All D modules in GLN of K drive category. So again, again, you can define this. This is now we'll actually uh, do uh, a little bit of uh, well, well variance of this. So, so I will form a conjecture about this, but I will also form the conjecture about some uh, slightly simpler things. Well, there will be kind of three things. The, so the 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 uh, at the bottom, I'll have actually D modules on the fine Grassmannian of GLN. Note that for uh, if I do it for n equal to one, then the fine Grassmannian just k star mod o star, and k star mod o star is just integer. So this is just D modules on Z, which is very easy to describe. So somehow in that case, conjecture will be not very interesting, uh, although true. Uh, and so, and again, there will be some kind of quasi coherent description of that. Mm, uh, and, uh, and then there will be actually one level in between, which is uh, sort of uh, for n equal to 1 will correspond to, uh, will again correspond to uh, G models on K star. Namely, I, sh I can take the, the Whitaker category of GLN. K and let me so this is by definition, this is uh, D modules on GLN K, which are uh, which are equivariant again with my with respect to my N of K comma chi. Say on the left or on the right, it doesn't matter. So on one side. So because this capital N is trivial when little n is equal to one. Then, uh, for a li when little n is equal to one, that this thing is the same as this thing. So somehow here I'm not doing anything, and I want to form the conjecture. This is equal to something. Uh, now, um, mm, unfortunately, th to do this, I have to introduce one more piece of notation, and this is about uh, well. I was initially thinking of hiding this under the rug, but then decided not to do this. Uh, so suppose that S is a scheme uh, or a general stack or a drive scheme, which is locally. Well, OK, I don't think I need this, so which is just, just a scheme or a stack. Well, then, of course, you can consider the category of quasi coherent sheaves on S, let's suppose that's fine type for simplicity. And inside, of course, you have the category of coherent sheaves. And again, we're talking, we're talking about derived categories now. And when I say quasi coherent sheaves, I mean actually really just unbounded derived category of quasi coherent sheaves. And so, uh, now, there's a different version of that. And that's actually important for me in, the, in this kind of geometric language reasons, for example, that's extremely important. There's a, there's a general. Now, the, po the point is that so when you have this. Category, we have categories which are co complete categories which are, say, closed under arbitrary direct sum. There's a notion of compact object on that category. And usually, coherent, well, unless S is smooth, coherent sheaves are not compact in quasi coherent sheaves. That's kind of, uh, but, and the objects which are, which are compact in quasi coherent sheaves under some nice assumptions on S, these are usually perfect complexes and not just all, all coherent complexes. But uh, you have a different version of that. Uh, uh, and uh, of that category, which is called incoherent sheaves. And this is, by definition, the following category. Take the category of coherent sheaves, again, derived category, bounded derived category of coherent sheaves, and then you formally int complete it. And, and you get something which is different from that in general. So when S is smooth, you get the same. And so, so these co-complete categories, they're kind of 
nicely characterized by the, by, I mean, uh, by the compact objects, and here the compact objects in this are perfect complexes, and the compact objects in this are uh, coherent complexes. And uh, so these categories are really different for, uh, and actually, uh, Arinkin and Gainsbury define a whole bunch of categories uh, which sits of between these two. So there's a notion of single support for coherent sheaves, and which sort of, uh, and this which allows you to inter interpolate between this. But but this is something I will not talk about. So just to uh, formulate the conjectures carefully, I need this notion, and then now notion I need I need some well stack which I'll denote by W N, and this is the stack which classifies just the following data. where EI is a rank I local system on D star. And these are just maps of local systems, which can be zero or non-zero. And uh, uh, so here, and one more notation I'll introduce is that, well, this thing maps to, let me call this eta. This obviously maps to my LSN by just looking at the very last thing here. And uh, I'll denote by W and zero the pre-image of the trivial local system. Of, well, of the, let me write pon, point mod GLM, because you can see the trivial but not trivialized local system, which sits, well, this thing corresponds to trivial local system in here. And then the conjecture will be the following. So here, I don't have enough space, so here, well, let me write here, okay. So this is set two. So here on the bottom, I'm going to write incoherent sheaves on WN zero. Here, I'm going to write quasi-coherent sheaves on WN. And here, that's kind of the, the funniest thing. I should write incoherent sheaves of the following thing. So of Wn times Wn over Lsn. This some set of conjectures. Again, it can be deduced from some considerations in this 3D and equal four gauge theory. But, uh, 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 but well, up to this distinction, distinction between quasi co and in co, which I don't know how to how to see from from gauge theory, but uh, but other than that, it can, it can be actually deduced from there. And uh, now we know very little about that. Uh, so let me say that somehow, for example, if we look, well, the simplest one is of course the, this this one on the bottom. And for example, for n equal to two, we have a short paper with Misha Finkelberg. So this conjecture, for example. Uh, kind of, well, this conjecture is close to being known for, equal to, for n equal to 2. So, I mean, for n equal to 2, uh, Finkelberg and myself uh, proved, uh, proved, well, some weaker version of this, still a weaker version. But I kind of hope that this weaker version can be in finite amount of time turned into a full, ver full version. And uh, I should also say, well, I, I'm, I'm running out of time, and I still want to say you know, three minutes to say, say something about set three. Uh, 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 let me just say that if you look at this category, then you can actually impose some equivariance, additional equivariances here on, on the left or on the right. And if you impose some equivalence both on the left and on the right with respect to some parahoric subgroup, for example, respect to a Wahori group or respect to GFO or respect to something in between, then uh, Bezrukovnikov has a coherent description of that category. But uh, it's not very easy to say how one is, and which is actually, in that case, uh, looks pretty similar to what we get here, to some part of what we get here. But how exactly this conjecture is compatible with Bezrukovnikov equivalences, Equivalences. So this is uh, uh, this is quite mysterious for me. So I don't know how to formulate a careful statement there. 
But nonetheless, I believe that this conjecture is true. The stated, in fact, this is the close of monoidal category. So G models on the group form, form a monoidal category, and incoherent sheaves on such a, such a fiber product also form a monoidal category. And I believe that this is the close of monoidal categories. OK. Now, I have maybe two minutes left of, well, I think I started maybe two minutes later, so I have maybe three minutes left. So let me talk about uh, set number three. Well, set number three will be essentially a repetition of, of what Misha said in the very end last time. So, OK, set three. Now, again, I uh, let me say it like this. So set three will be some conjecture that some categories are equivalent. But in fact, this is not, this is not the, the right conjecture. That conjecture actually has to do with some notion of local ge geometric Langlois duality. It's a statement about some categories being locally geometrical Langlois dual to each other. But I don't want to talk about local geometric Langlois duality. So, and this equivalence is a special sort of it follows from that, but so, so, so somehow it's only a sort of very small part of the right conjecture, but, uh, but formulating the right conjecture will, 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 will require another lecture, basically. Uh, so, okay, so let me, uh, okay, so when we get, we're again going to fix some C, which is a complex number, and so, and also we're going to fix some, not, some uh, uh, integers N and M, and I'll, I'll assume that N is greater or equal than M, and here I I'm going to consider, well, again, I'm going to consider the kajdan lusty category for level 1 over C for GLN slash M hat. Now, there's some critical shift which is also in, should be incorporated here. Let me ignore this. And uh, now Pavel claims that uh, he can prove in two seconds that at least for generic C, this is equivalent to representations of the corresponding quantum supergroup. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so if so, I think that if Pavel, well, so I can no, well, no, no, this statement is formally wrong. So I don't. Uh, I'm sure that there's no place in literature where where there's a theorem, you know, category, you know, casualistic category is equivalent to category of this one. So so it's not contained in literature. Now Pavel says that what's contained in the literature is enough in order to deduce this. Now I think it, uh, that means that that's actually a very good thesis problem. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so this is a finely a fine least super algebra. This is finely uh, so Q is something like e to the pi i c, I think. Uh, well, and uh, moreover. Uh, somehow, but uh, but what makes you know that that's maybe a kind of reasonably hard physics problem, maybe unreasonable unreasonably hard physics problem is to actually investigate what happens for all C. So uh, I mean, Pyle says it can prove for generic C. First of all, generic probably means irrational, but or that I think already doesn't fall immediately from Pyle's arguments. Uh, but uh, uh, but I mean, this is not what I mean. I want to formulate still something else here, but. Uh, uh, what happens for sort of special spe specific values of C? This is actually, I think, an interesting question. Now, here uh, the claim is that this is supposed to be equivalent, and in particular, when C goes to infinity, this becomes just uh, well. Everything is set up in such a way that when C goes to infinity, that becomes not representations of G L N M itself, but of the degenerate version of G L N M that Misha described yesterday. And so here, let me just fin. Uh, sorry, c goes to zero. One, one over c goes to infinity. When when one over c goes to infinity, then in principle it means that c is equal to zero. So this number is one. But when it's one, we'll have well. Yeah, let me let me just be, sorry. I, but I had to finish, so let me just use one more minute to write what I want to write here. So uh, so here what we need is to write d modules. Well, let me uh, so uh, the, let me assume for simplicity. Let me assume that n is greater than m for simplicity. Uh, then this is actually same for n equal to m, but it's slightly different. So here I should take d modules on 
right here, D modules on the following thing. So you should take the affine Grassmannian of GLM. Uh, here should take uh, and uh, okay, let me write it here like this GLM. And here should take things which are equivariant with respect to GLM of O, first of all. So which you can embed GLM into GLN under these assumptions easily. Uh, semi direct product with some group U and M, comma, chi and M. And this is some unipotent group. I don't have time to describe this. This is some unipotent group which you can associate to numbers N and M. So this U and M seeds inside is some unipotent group inside GLN. And uh, chi and M is some character. And it has the, you know, we can define for any N and M, but it has the property that if M is equal to N minus 1, this guy is trivial. If M is 0, this is this is a maximally important group for the non-degenerate character. So, uh, so, okay, uh, let me write it here. So, the claim is that these two things are supposed to be equivalent. And uh, so, uh, so as Misha said yesterday, we have a paper which is almost finished, uh, uh, where I'm also more by accident part of the list of authors, but mostly by Misha, Roma Truck, and Vita Ginsburg, where this is proved for C equal to zero. And, uh, and general C is kind of work in progress that we're doing with Dennis from time to time, I think. Uh, 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 and maybe at some point it will be proved. And, uh, and this again, can, and this, is, this, is th this thing is really the mysterious thing that Gaiota actually can deduce from some kind of string theory calculations. Which, which I, I'm absolutely unable to understand, but these are really calculations with you know, numbers and you know, symbols and so on. So you can actually do some magic with these numbers and symbols and get this, and get this conjecture. So I have absolutely no idea how. Okay, let me stop here. Well, it's a, well. In principle, you have to sort of define what happens. Well, it, you, you, I'm really thinking sort of on this level for this casual linguistic category. So, so you can actually, I mean, a priori is defined for fine value of this level, but uh, you should find some kind of extension of that to infinite level. So, I mean, and which is a priori not canonical. Like you can, I mean, there. Are, I mean, you have a family of categories over a fine line, and you can you, you need to f choose some extension of that category when uh, 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 w w when this parameter goes to infinity. And uh, there is a f there's a family you can define so that uh, there's an extension of this family you can define so that uh, uh, what y what you will have at infinity is representations. Uh, well, again, integrable with respect to the even part of the uh, of not of the fine dimensional group J L N M. Well, just oh, sorry, just represent. I mean, naively you would think that it will be representation of just supergroup G L and M, but in fact you get something uh, different. You get some kind of degenerate version of that, which means well, you, you can get both. Right? You can get both, but the right. But if if you want if you want this conjecture to still hold, then yes. then then you need the degenerate version. So I, I I don't know why, but okay. but that that's a fact. I understand. Yeah. And uh, uh, can you draw this group U and M like Well, let me uh, sort of. Well, if I. I, I can't do it on the spot. I just don't remember. I, l let me say in the words how to define it. So there's a general uh, procedure that if you start with a say nilpotent element in the in any Lie algebra, then uh, there is a unipotent say nilpotent Lie subalgebra with the with the character that you can attach that to. It. That's the one you used, for example, to define finite W algebras. Uh, and uh, now, and this this thing corresponds to uh, the following nilpotent. It corresponds to nilpotent, which is uh, one Jordan block of size uh, n minus m. Uh, okay. You take you take, you take this this nilpotent, uh, and then you take the corresponding. And actually, when nilpotent is not is not even, and this is not not always even, uh, then uh, in principle there's some choice you have to. Uh, the, 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 then this algebra is not canonical. There's some choice that we need to make. But uh, but in this case, the choice can be can be made sort of very more or less canonically, just explicitly with matrices. But right, so. this is a very nice algebra. Okay. So but but this is this is the group you have to put here. Oh, C is just C is uh, I forgot.
Uh, not for some other supergroups. Uh, so, well, okay, so there, there are sort of two. Well, if I'm only asking about quantum uh, Ah, okay, so you have, an, well, Pasha, this is, uh, let me forward this question to Pasha. So this question between Kazan Richtig and quantum group, uh, you can generalize for other supergroups. Uh, yeah, for, uh, well, like, let's say, simply super algebras, which have. Uh, But again, you know, it's a it's a thesis problem. I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't say something was wrong. I, I just I just claim that in the literature it does not appear, and uh, uh, a pile of thing that does appear, but uh, but his definition of what it, what it means to appear in the literature is different from mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know how to answer such a question. очень хорошая дебюя алгебра. Это то, что называется континуус. Потом Саша с Ваней. Очень хорошая. Thank you.